Hi, I'm Jeff Stokes. Welcome to Jeff's Daily Dose of Encouragement. My encouragement for you today is hunger after the gifts of the Spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, in the last verse, it says, But covet earnestly, this is the King James Version, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Or, I think the New King James says, earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I will show you a more excellent way, which is love. Love, of course, is the top priority. Love is the more excellent way. But we are encouraged by Paul to earnestly desire the best gifts, or covet earnestly the best gifts. The word in Greek is zealous, for earnestly desire or covet earnestly. And it's where we get the English word zeal from. So we are to seek God for those gifts, for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the nine spiritual gifts, which are written earlier in that chapter. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same, by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these works that one and the self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. My old mentor and friend, late friend Rodney Francis used to used to impress this upon us a lot to earnestly desire the best gifts and as I said before it has a, and the meaning of it is to have zeal for it, to be zealous for those things and sometimes we can find that hard to drum that up in ourselves but I have been finding recently that God will put you in situations he will put you into that situation where it becomes a real burden, if you like, on your heart that causes you to cry out because he wants you to have those spiritual gifts. The world around us today is crying out. The church, for instance, has got so many sick people in it, it's not funny. The world is crying out with people with mental health problems and often they are demonic problems. And Jesus said, you know, that, that the Father, if you ask the Father, how much more will the Father give the Holy Ghost to them who ask him? If you know how to give good, good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give good things to them who ask him? Or how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Ghost to them who ask him? And these things are actually ours as of right, as children of God, as saints, as believers in Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John 14, verse 12, to the disciples, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that's good old King Jimmy again, isn't it? He that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. We are believers. I'm a believer. And so Jesus said that if we are believers, that he would give those things to us. In Acts chapter 2, it says that in the last days, and it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids, or handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. It also says in Mark chapter 16, at the end of the Gospel of Mark, 
that these signs shall follow them that believe. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. That's the name of Jesus, the only name in heaven and in earth and anywhere that can perform these things or has the power to do these things. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. As I said before, the church is so full of sick people, it's not funny. There are so many demonic problems in society with mental health issues, and etc., etc. It's not funny. And the world, all they keep hearing is words. All we keep doing as Christians is giving them words 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 but paul said the gospel is not in word only but in demonstration and in power so where is the power of god it's called dunamis in greek the power or ability to do anything anything that is obviously good and of the will of god you know jesus went around and it says many times, and he had compassion on the people, and he healed them. He healed their sick. He cast out devils, etc., etc. And he even had compassion on people and raised their dead. And it says that we are to be conformed to the image of the Son of God, Romans eight twenty nine. That we're predestinated to be conformed to the image of His Son. It says in 1 John 4 that as he is, so are we in the world. So as I've grown in God, I've come to understand, gee, I'm supposed to be like my master. It says Jesus said that the servant is as his master. And he's not even, we are not even called just servants anymore. We are friends if we do whatever he commands us. We are his friends. And we have the potential ability to be able to walk in signs and wonders, to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils by the finger of God. or by, And many times you'll see, like with the apostles and with Jesus, often they didn't even lay hands on anybody. They just got a word and gave a, an instruction or a command. And rise, take up your bed and walk. Things like that, you know, arise, be healed, something like that. Sometimes hands were laid, but a lot of times it was just merely by a word, and the devils often went out by a word, just spoken word, gone. We need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They are, as my late friend and mentor again said, when he was around, and he used to teach on these things a lot, that Gifts of the Spirit are the Christian's tools of the trade. What sets us apart from the world that they can believe that Jesus is alive, that he is the Christ, that he is the only way. Well, number one, it is that we love God and we love people. And by this will all men know that we are his disciples because we love one another. But also, Jesus specifically was known that he was the Christ by the signs and wonders that he did. People knew that he was the Christ. And people will know that if we are following Jesus and we've been with Jesus and we are walking in love and doing signs and wonders because we have compassion on people in the name of Jesus, they will know that Jesus is alive and that believing in Christ is far better than any other religious system or ideological system that exists. Because God the Father, Jesus the Son and the Holy Ghost are the living God, three in one. They are alive. Jesus is alive. He did die on the cross for our sins. And he rose from the dead. 
and sent the same Holy Spirit that dwelt inside him to be in us so that we can be his hands and his feet and obey his voice and do those signs and wonders. So we really, really do need in these days for the church to stand up for Christians, to press in, to cry out to God and with zeal seek and desire the gifts of the Holy Spirit. To have that word of knowledge, that word in season, to be able to heal the sick, raise the dead and cast out devils, to show the power of the name of Jesus Christ. If you don't know Jesus Christ and you have that desire in your heart to want to know more, that you sense in your heart that you are lost and you need salvation and you need to be healed or delivered, then if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him and he in God. And you too then can be filled with the Holy Spirit. We call it the baptism of the Holy Spirit and can speak in other tongues and can receive the gifts of the Spirit and the abilities of God as he leads you by his voice to also heal the sick, deliver from demons, even raise the dead as God commands. Because the same Holy Spirit that lived in Jesus has now come to live in you. That's my encouragement for you today is be hungry for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Have a great day.